Hi guys, welcome back to The Forgetful Scholar. I am Jessica and this is gonna be my first book review. So let's get into it. Ah, my first book review, oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I seen all the booktubers do that so I just had to give it a try. So I guess it's time to be a bit judgy. Um, also just to let you know some of these books I've half read before I started this week because Forgetful is not just, it's in the title of this channel for a reason. Um, I have a habit of starting a book, really enjoying it, but then I put it down for whatever reason. Because work got busy or family got a little crazy, which happens a lot. Uh, and I just forget about it. And it has nothing to do with if I hate the, like, not like the book or anything like that. I just, I just, I'm a very forgetful person. So I even <laughs> wrote down some notes for the books that are because I'm gonna forget a lot of stuff. So actually, let me open the notebook up. Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. So, let's get started. My Highland Laird. Okay. Oops, the lighting's been crazy. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this book. Hmm, I wasn't pretty, I wasn't really happy for this book. So this book is a free star. I really love the Endor series and two books in the Endor series. The first one and the third one, five stars for me. Actually, I'm actually in the process of lending out the first one to try to get one of my friends interested in romance. So it's definitely two of them are five stars for me. This one, three stars. And it's fun. It's cute. It opens up. Uh, the mystery of what's going on through all of the books and I really like that aspect of it but Karen and Brannon are their romance I find very boring I didn't find it very interesting uh, the third act conflict I mean I understand third act conflict is just part of the course but it really drives me nuts when all of a sudden a certain personality type pops up in the main character that we haven't seen before and for Karen he had, all of a sudden he has this huge temper and in his POV he seems pretty even tempered even kind of very jovial person he likes Brandon's unique view on things and he's he, you know he <sighs> sorry I'm a little I'm nervous it's my first book review okay so <laughs> what is that voice okay in I think like two or three pages before the big like third conflict he has this temper out of nowhere and he strangles someone or tries to strangle someone that betrayed the clan and almost had the clan starving to death and things like that. Like that came out of nowhere and then the temper came out of nowhere. And you know, so Brandon went back to his planet and it's inner galactical stuff. Anyway, so we went back to his planet and the pining was over really quick. You know, uh, Brandon's brother-in-law is like, you're being an immature child. And he's like, I am being an immature child. And then, boom, next paragraph, Karen's there. And I was like, wow, okay. So not even any kind of pining, anything. And Timothy, I'm not going to spoil what Timothy is, but he was not necessary. I hated every aspect of Timothy. That was just obnoxious. So even though I love the Endor series and I can't wait for more books, even though I love the Ender series, can't wait for more books. I'm really, really, this was just not it for me. Um, I'm really hoping that we'll get a Trouble and Rexington, um, Rexington, Rexington story soon. And, uh, the younger brother, Taryn, who is, a uh, who loves romance novels. I hope we get his story with, I think it's the, the Wicked Duke. I think that's who they're gonna, she's, they're planning on hooking him up with, so I'm really looking forward to those. So even though this one just wasn't it for me, I really do like the series. So if you haven't checked out the series and you and you like MM, Space, Regency stuff, <laughs> sounds weird, but it, it is a fun ride. So if you like that, I would definitely recommend it. This Meddling Kids, um, I gave it four stars. I really liked it. The best way to describe it would be, I think everyone described it as Scooby-Doo meets Cthulhu. I really enjoyed it. Andy and Nate, I adore them. And Andy, you know, the first time you meet her, she's kind of
kind of explaining in detail what happens to testicles when you kick them. And like, that is just a fan fave right there. Automatic. Uh, Carrie, I could have done without. I didn't really particularly like her. Um, I didn't like her POVs. I've kind of rushed through them a little bit. Nate's POV was interesting because he comes in later and he's in a mental institution. And with Cthulhu-esque horror, I was really interested to get more of his point of view, which unfortunately we, I mean, we get a good bit of it, but I would have liked him from the beginning. You know, take Carrie's part of and give it to Nate. Carrie wasn't bad. I get who she was in this. She was like the rational, I get that. It's just, I found her a little bit boring. Um, the galactic horror kind of nightmares in the beginning were really good, really spooky. I like that. I was a dis bit disappointed. Uh, when they got to, you know, kind of the climax and the big fight, it was more action, which was fun to read. And the bad guy, a hoot. But it wasn't as scary as I would have liked it. I would want more spooks. Because, you know, this Cthulhu intergalactic car, you know, are you sane, are you crazy kind of stuff. So I, I really do like it. I really, really, really did enjoy it. Um, I definitely, definitely, definitely would have wanted some more spooks but it's fantastic i want to read more from the author that was great six of crows <laughs> oof okay three stars done no <laughs> let me explain before all the all the rage comes my way i loved Kaz. you know a brooding anti-hero it's an archetype for a reason i love it i'm here for it wonderful the aversion to touch was fascinating. The trauma behind it, like heartbreaking. Um, Inej, I found a little boring. I did. Um, compared to Nina and Matthias and Jesper and even Wayland. She wasn't a bad character. And I think in a different book or around different people, she would have really shined. Because she was very much the level-headed, spiritual one. But, I mean, with Kaz and then... Nina, who is my girl. I love Nina. You know, she was Nina's dynamic and, got, and she has complex reasons and loyalties and everything going on. So I feel like Inej, this was not her book to shine. That is not why I gave it three stars. The reason I gave it three stars, because it took till page about 270 for the heist to happen. And that was the whole point of the book, the heist. And the heist was great. I was there. High energy. Oh my god, what's gonna happen to Inej? Where did Kaz go? Oh no, Nina. And then boom. Flashback. What? Like, what? Okay. Alright. Back into the heist. Oh no, Jesper and Waylon, they're here, blah blah, and this is not working. Oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? Flashback. Are you kidding me? <laughs> 270 books to get to this heist, which is fantastic. And then you cut your tension twice. No. Come on! I want the tension! I wanted to like be nail biting with this! Ah! Oh! And the back, you know, fat, oh, back flash. Mm. <laughs> the flashbacks were great scenes, but you know, you had 270 pages, you could have put it in. You didn't have to put it in the middle of the high tension part. So that, that is why it's three stars. Did I have to stop myself from immediately reading Crooked King? Yes! Am I, do I want to know what happens to them? Hell yes. Am I looking forward to reading Crooked? Yes. So good job, I guess. But three stars. I want my attention. Thank you very much. <sighs> All right. So this one is from Joanna Lindsay, which is one of my favorite writers. Uh, one of my favorite writers. She's great. Again, sorry about the lighting. I'm, I'm figuring it out. This was really sweet. Um, I gave it four stars. Four and a five. I'm not sure if I would recommend this out. I'm not sure if I would reread it a lot. Monty was great. You know, just, uh, you know, scamp kind of uh, rank character. You know, he was very funny, very like blase about things um, while secretly being a badass. You, you love it. You'd love to see it. Vanessa was fantastic. Because a lot of times I find that I don't like the tomboy heroine type um, because they just come off as bitchy. And you could be a strong, independent one without being a bitch. Like, it's possible. I mean, you know, it happens. 
So Vanessa here, she was the perfect mix of tomboy and Regency era lady. She loved fishing. She, you know, loved her horse was from the Highlands. I believe they're, um, I forget what they're called. Um, but they're the big horses that are, have the long hair. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. And I forgot to make a note of it because I forget everything. I'm sorry. Um, she wore pants and when she first meets Monty, she's masqueraded as a boy because she doesn't want to bring a scandal to her family. So she understands that she loves these things. She's still going to do it, but she kind of has to hide it a little bit because she doesn't want to bring scandal to her family, which to me made perfect sense. And I was like, okay. And you know, she fished, she did all these boy things, but she knew how to be a lady and when to be appropriate. And I was like, that makes sense to me. The sisterly relationship, relationship between her and her two younger sisters who are twins and they're a year younger than she is that was very realistic to me I have a big sister I have a little brother it was very realistic the siblings you fight you make up instantly you know kind of thing what I didn't like is that there was this huge family secret that Vanessa kept from her sisters through the whole book the sisters never find out about it that annoyed me you know because this this affected them too. This is the reason why their big sister and their dad left for seven years. It affected them. They had, a, I felt like they had a right to know. And they weren't like they were 12. They were 18. They're a year younger than her. They're on the mat, you know, they're on the marriage mark market. Ooh, I wish I could talk. Ugh. But they're, you know, doing their season, their husband hunting too. They're not children in this world standpoint. So I felt like Vanessa treating them like children was, ugh. I did not like that. The conflict resolution was literally, you have to wait for the last second. And it was good. It was, it was satisfying. I like that a lot. The mom though, the mom. Now what happened? And I don't want to spoil anything because this is a relatively new one. Um, I think this was this year or last year. I'm not sure this was okay. Three years ago. So relatively new. So I don't want to spoil anything. Um, I don't, I personally don't think she should feel guilt for what happened, but with her POV, I was really surprised there wasn't any internal guilt. And I was like, okay, cause normally people or characters who kind of go through something similar have a lot of internal guilt about it. And I was like, okay girl, so either you have great mental health, you're going to a great therapist, or you're a sociopath. So what what's going on here? Why aren't you feeling at least a little like, oh man, you know? Because there was none of that. And she basically sold her daughter off to fix it. Sold Vanessa off to this, this guy, the bad guy's son, to fix the problem. And I would have liked to see a little bit more internal conflict about that. Because they hate this family. This family is the reason their family was destroyed. They hate this family. So I just wanted a little more of like, oh, you know, is this the right thing? You'll bring your dad back, but I don't know. I, you know, you're my daughter, blah, blah, blah. So it was, you know, that was a little like, okay. I did not like the mom because of that. I'm hoping this opens up uh, family stories in this world. Like I would like to know about the sisters, see them get their own story. And I would really like to see the son of the bad guy I really want him to have his own book. I would love to see that because he's really depicted as like a jerk, you know, he's a jerk. He's angry, you know, um, he treats Vanessa really badly. He doesn't, he's very callous. So I would, it would be interesting because Joanna Lindsay, one of my favorite books, the five stars of her, I believe is the devil that tamed her. And it's a story of the female villain from the book before her romance and in the book before you hated her, but in her book, you, you rooted for her. You understood, you might not have agreed with why she was the way she was, but you understood it and you really wanted her to have her happy ending. So I want to see Joanna Lindsay do her match again with the bad guy's son in this book. So I don't even remember his name. So that would be really a lot of fun. Probably should have taken better notes, huh? Cause I'm forgetting so many people's things and names and everything. Okay, this one, yeah, that's better. So this one, the it is a three star and it's lucky it's not a two star. The only reason it's not a two star is because Jeremy Mallory, 
was in it for a bit like you see the Mallory family where they are and what happened so the nostalgia kind of kept it from being a two star but wow wow and I really procrastinated on this one because Jack or Jacqueline she is the daughter of James Mallory and Georgina who was in Gentle Rogue their daughter and she was featured in the book before with her cousin Judith Judy I love Judy she's a sweetheart but Jack in that story she was she came off horrible she came off selfish and you know entitled and I was like okay maybe her book she doesn't, you know, maybe that was just because it was Judy's book and Judy is a very sweet, shy kind of character. So maybe them up against each other, Jack just came off as really abrasive. No, no, I did not care for Jack. She annoyed the piss out of me. She, <laughs> she was good at everything and she's gorgeous and nothing, nothing she ever did was wrong and she's brassy and bold and it, I get what the author was trying to do. To me, it just came off as self-centered, you know, conceited entitlement. It didn't come off as like, she's not like other girls. Ah, no, it didn't. It didn't come off like that, at least for me. So I did not enjoy this book. Um, and this is uh, basically, this storyline was, t had two books before it kind of building up this bad guy and this bad guy is a pirate I'm not gonna say pirate king but he was apparently a really scary dude that had a lot of pirates under his control and James Mallory was a gentleman pirate for a while and he made an enemy out of him and the first book I think his name is LaCroix LaCroix he came up um with Gabby and Boyd's book and Boyd is Georgina's brother in that book, he was a little intimidating. He was a little scary, at least from Gabby's POV. He was okay. The two books coming up where he's the bad guy, it just, it didn't read that way. I barely remembered he was the bad guy in Judy's book, supposedly, or being pushed up to be James's huge rival, you know, things like that. In this book, he didn't seem, he wasn't scary. He didn't seem intimidating. There was, it didn't feel like a threat. He didn't feel like a threat. For three books, he's supposed to be a threat. Give me a threat. You know, it, he just didn't, he seemed like an aged old pirate that just wanted a, his one over on James Mallory. Oh, and he didn't, couldn't do it. It almost cartoonish. You know, so basically, but, but Damon, the guy in this book, that, that, is one of the reasons it's three stars. He was fantastic. I was interested in his backstory. I want to know why he was, you know, entangled with the LaCroix, LaCroix pirate guy, what was going on. You know, I really was interested in him and that's what kept me engaged in this book, just him. And unfortunately with romance novels, you want to like both of the characters. So that was unfortunate. I kind of written my teeth when it was Jack's POV because I did not give a shit about her. Like I did not. I was like, come on, man. You know, one point she jumps off of the ship to swim back to shore, even though she's been on ships her entire life. And she, you know, she would know by now she was far too, like far too out of the Thames to swim back with her heavy dress, but she tried it. And I was like, no, no, let her drown. It's okay, let her drown. And you don't want to think that about the heroine in the stories. And I was disappointed because I love the Mallory stories. I really do. Amy's story, Magic of You, is five stars for me. I love that book. I've reread it a hundred times. I always loan it out to get people interested in romance. So it just, it drove me nuts. And Amy is a good example of a female who is bold, you know, without being bitchy, which to me, Jack wants. So basically, this book made me crave violence and I didn't get it. So three stars. I didn't get it until this book. Lisa Claypeth. Now I understand why everyone, every booktuber I've watched goes on about her. I've never read anything from her and this is an older book. Again, I found it at my used bookstore because I wanted to try it out. You know, it's from, oh, 2000. 15. So that's not too, too old, but still. This one, spoiler alert, not spoiler alert, 
first three pages, I think, the heroine accidentally on purpose shoots a guy in the neck and kills him. And I was like, oh, I am here for it. Let's do this. Let's just, you know, just move past the fact that her shooting guy in the neck brought me so much joy. Let's just, I'll, I'll deal with that later. Let's not, let's not go into this. I rated this four stars. The only reason it's four stars because I'm not sure I would loan it out to someone to get them interested in romance. But I really loved it. Sarah, she was fantastic. Derek was a fantastic character. I enjoyed it so much. The only thing that I was like, oof, really, you know, was um, Derek's ex-mistress was became obsessed with him, you know, um, and she did a lot of bad things. And Derek is kind of shown to be this badass. He owns this gambling club. No one crosses him kind of archetype. But he doesn't really do anything to the ex-mistress. Even when the ex-mistress convinced a guy to go to Sarah's room to rape her, he doesn't really do... Like, he saved Sarah, but he doesn't do anything to the woman that set it all up. And I'm sorry, the guy did not take that much convincing to go rape a girl. Like, I really wanted that guy's legs broken or something, but oh no, he's... There's gonna be rumors about him in society. Don't worry about it. I was like, no, that's, that's not enough. Can we put him in a grave, please? Please? No? Okay. A broken bone? No? Sepsis? Something? No? Okay. And then, <laughs> in the third act, the ex-mistress basically burns down their home and uh, Derek thinks that she's dead and like, oh man, the pain he feels. Like, you feel it. You really feel it. And you, you love a bad boy with like a big cinnamon roll heart. Come on, who doesn't? And then Sarah is ki actually kidnapped and Sarah takes care of it because Sarah's amazing and I love her. So she takes care of it and then she goes to the ex mistress's husband because she's married. She's been married the whole time. And it's like, hey, your wife is psycho. This is what she's doing. Handle it or I will. And he's like, oh, okay, I'll go and prison her in Scotland. And I was like, couldn't Derek have said that? Be like, hey, get, take your wife out of here. I'm going to do something. So that, that was a little like, oh, that was a little annoying. And I understand the mistress was for the third um, act conflict. I get that. But couldn't have been, you know, Derek talks to the wife, the husband. He takes the wife away. The wife breaks out and that happens because maybe, maybe, I don't know. But that, that was the only thing, that was the only thing that a little bit bothered me in this book. This book is four stars. I love it. I got another Lisa Clay Pass for next week's. I'm really excited. Again, it's an older one because I'm, I'm getting a lot of my books from my used bookstore. But I'm really happy that like I found a new writer that I really want to stick my teeth in and really just want to read all her backlog and everything. So that, so that's, I'm me. So I'm really excited about that. It's kind of the reason I started this channel. I wanted to broaden my reading selection. Um, okay. And the next and last book I read was Wicked and the Wallflower for the, um, Bare Knuckle Bastards, uh, trilogy. Her writing style was very different from Lisa Claypass's. So it took me kind of a moment to get back into it. It's, she had like this fairy tale poetry aspect to it that I didn't particularly like. Um, it took me a long time to get interested in the story. Um, this is definitely a three stars for me. It wasn't until basically the third act that I cared what happened. Um, Felicity, she was an interesting character for me because one point I adored her. I thought she was great. And another scene, she annoyed the piss out of me and I was like, what is wrong with this woman? So it was very hot and cold with me and I don't understand why. Um, Devil. I mean, I wanted to dive into his story. I wanted to know more about him, but it was so dramatic and vague that like I couldn't be bothered. I was like, all right, I don't, I don't, I don't care anymore. It's fine. Until the third act, then I cared. And I was like, oh, I hope he's okay. You know, la, 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 la. Spoiler alert, you know, he's beaten by his, their brother, the Mad Duke, and he's kind of left in a freezer overnight. So when they get him out, he's okay and he immediately like like it doesn't seem to he didn't seem to need any recovery time he was like oh i'm good Boof. like out of nowhere even though he was unconscious and near death the page before 
I gave it three stars because I did not particularly like this one, but I, I think I might give the author itself another try. The next book in the Bare Knuckle Bastard story is, uh, I think, um, Beast story, and I was like, maybe I'll, I'll read that one. I'm honestly more interested in the Mad Duke and Grace's story because it seems like they're a pair up story, and I'm like, how is she going to redeem the Mad Duke where we want him to have a happy ending? Because he was a dick in this book. Like, he was, you did not want him, I did not want him to live through this book. So, so that's kind of interesting. So I think I will give Sarah McLean like some more books to try her out. Cause you know, like I said, sometimes just one or two books in an author's catalog just ain't it. You know, whether it's your mood of the day or what, it's just not it. So I, I'm, I will be happy to give her another try for something else. Um, I mean, I finally got interested in the, the bastard siblings, um, at the end of it, like Grace, I really like Grace. I want to know what's going on with her. So, I mean, you know, I'll give it a try. I'll see if I can find something um, from hers to give it a try. So, that's it. All I got for you this week. <laughs> so, this was my first kind of book review. I read these books this week. It, it was fun. I mean, it was, it was kind of chaotic. It was fun. I definitely kicked my butt, got my button going. Um, and I enjoyed it and, you know, um, <laughs> so I'm so new to this. So I hope you guys liked it too. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I don't want to, but it's time for me to get back to the real world. So I'll see you later.